tell you about something, they tell you about the part they like. And I was just talking about the story of my wife, you know what I'm saying? I left out all the details of me hitting her in the car. You know, I didn't like that part. I left that thing right on out. You know what I'm saying? That's how that thing go. Now I was dead. I was sitting there back in that thing. I didn't say, who just jumped up on me? I said, oh, goodness. I thought that thing was bad, too. I thought that thing was bad. second time hit a non-moving idea. You good? <laughs> you good? We on camera, you good? I'm trying to make sure you lie. Right. Yeah, okay. You know what I'm saying? Right. Trying to make sure everybody is separate now. Everybody calm down. You know what I'm saying? Goodness gracious. I'll be in the zone, alright? <laughs> Alright, let's see. 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 let us Bro, read that thing. He don't even sound like he likes So, God, so love the world. You know what I'm saying? I'm tired of Christian Jesus in this one. It's all right. You know what I'm saying? It's our book. You know what I'm saying? He stole it from us. Everything in this book is good. You know what I'm saying? Even the ones they wear out, misconstrue, make a darn mess out of it. The whole thing ours. Because the most I gave it to us. Hold on. Hold what you got right there. Go to uh, go to Romans chapter. Goodness Go to Romans chapter 3. This is our book. These people stole everything from us. So everything from us took our darn belief, our history, everything from us. Now we got, we finally get a chance to, to hear the truth, teach the truth. You best believe I'm gonna stand on it. Whole book art that the Most High God gave it to us. And most people, you know, as a year Christian, you get saying that whole book art. No, it's God's book. That's the problem. That's self righteousness. All right, let's read. It's Romans chapter three, verse one. What advantage then has the Jew? Uh oh. He said, What advantage then has the Jew? You know what Jew is for? Yehudi. Right? That's people of Judah. People of Yehuda. That's our people. Right? That's where we came from. Hebrews, Israelites. They tried to act like they didn't know where we from. We Israelites. We got picked up from west from the west side of Africa. Right? What do you think? We got picked up from the west side of Africa on, on an accident? They knew exactly who they were picking up. We the Israelites. Right? They brought us in here. Right? When they say, what advantage does it have the Jew? They talking about us. Let's see. So well, let's see what advantage we have. Well, what profit is there of circumcision? He said, what a profit is it if you circumcise? And what profit is it if you a Jew? Let's hear. Paul, tell us. 
much every way. He said much in every way. Right? So if somebody get there and tell you, what is it? I mean, you say that you an Israelite. You're a Hebrew Israelite. We don't call ourselves that. But that's fine. No. You a Hebrew Israelite. What does that mean? Jesus Christ died for all of our sins. Yeah, okay. That's cool. All I'm telling you, the book say, and I'm not making this up. We didn't just slide this thing in there. Did it read it one more time? What it say? What advantage then has the Jew? Uh huh. Or what profit is there of circumcision? Uh huh. Much in every way, chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. When it say oracles of God, you know what it's talking about? So when I say the book was given to us, our book, the book was given to us. They're talking about the oracles of, oracles of God. Right? So when we look at it, these Christian team people writing 3 6, John 3 16 on this thing, getting down, doing all that stuff. Oh, that, that stuff nice. That's nice theater. That's real nice. Look good on TV. What I'm telling you right now is our book. They make a mess out of our stuff. We still gonna stand on it. Everything. All the verses that they make a mess out of, we still gonna stand on it. It's John chapter 3, verse 16. He said, what advantage has the Jew? Much in every way. What is it proper to be circumcised? Much in every way. Chiefly, because we was given the oracle. The, mo the main reason, right? The main reason we got the advantage, because we was given the oracles of God. All we got to do is get back to it. That's what we're here for. I appreciate the most High God. That's what we're here for. This is John chapter 3, verse 16. Let's hear what it says. For God so loved the world uh -huh. that he gave his only begotten son uh -huh. that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You want to have everlasting life? Believe on the son. That's all you got to do. Let's hear about it next. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. You know how we ain't got the spirit of God? Because we always condemning people. Jesus didn't come for that. Jesus didn't come to condemn the world. What did he come for? Say the world. We always condemning people. We always talking about what somebody doing wrong. Always talking about sin. Always talking about people going to go to hell. That ain't the spirit of God. Let's hear about the next. He that believes on him is no. not condemned. He said, anybody who believes on him is not condemned. What happened though if you don't believe on him? But he that is not, but he that believes not is condemned already. No, but big condemned. We tell you going to hell. We tell you a sinner. We tell you what you're doing wrong. We ain't condemning you. Your boat was already condemned. We just relaying the news. You might not have heard. We just trying to make sure you heard the news. You already you've been condemned. We trying to help you out. Right? We ain't condemning nobody. Let's hear about it. Let's go. He said, you believe not, you are already condemned. What else? Because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. That's the reason why you're being condemned. Because you haven't believed in the name of the only begotten Son. What else? And this is the condemnation. That light is coming to the world. This is the condemnation. Light came into the world. The men love darkness rather than light. And rather than coming to the light, guess what the men want? Darkness. They want some darn darkness. Anybody that want darkness over light, guess what they're trying to do? Because their deeds were evil. They're trying to hide their deeds. Right? You're trying to hide some deeds. Right? You don't want everybody to see it. Right? You don't want everybody to see it. All right? That's what we're here for. We're here to be exposed. Let the Most High God see. Let the world see. Everything we have to do has to line up with the book. They go to this verse and they think it means for them that all you have to do, I mean, just believe. That's all you have to do. They read the whole thing and tell you, your deeds are evil. The reason why you didn't believe, this is the condemnation. That light came into the world and men loved the darkness rather than the light. And they did that because their deeds were evil. That's how you know. When your deeds is evil, you can run your mouth all you want. You don't believe in the Most High God. You don't believe in His Son. Right? You can prove that out by your deeds. Your mouth say one thing and your, your actions say another. What do you think the Most High God going to look at? When He judge a man, you think He going to judge a man by what His mouth say? Only? judge a man by one thing. What's in his heart? Right? Most of God want to know what's inside of your heart. When you, when you see what's inside of your heart, then he can work with it. He's going to try it too. He's going to put you through some stuff. Alright? He's going to make sure that you 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 true about what you're saying. 
That's why people get hung up on all types of silly stuff. E, I mean, they break easy. You see these Hebrews? I was just talking to a Hebrewism like uh on Facebook. Um, and uh, I forgot what he said. He said something about it was about eating. You know what I'm saying? It was like you know what I'm saying. You can't eat. No meat, pretty much. Essentially, what he's saying: don't eat no meat. You know what I'm saying? Like all meat. God never want people to eat meat. So I'm looking like, mm, nah, that's not true. I said something like that. I, like, I just love it. You know, simple. I just posted, nah, that's not true. You know what I'm saying? Because I've seen him post other stuff, and other stuff that seemed why. So I'm just like, nah, that's not true. So he hit me back. He was like, I don't want to argue back and forth on on Facebook. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Go ahead and hit me in my inbox. Then I didn't hit him. You know what I'm saying? Then I think he hit me in the inbox. Gave me his number. I was like, okay, I'll call you. I was on my way to work. It was early in the morning. I was on my way to work. So I was like, I'll call you while I'm driving to work. You know what I'm saying? So I'm talking to him and everything. I let him get his whole thing out. I just let him let loose. He think I mean, he just out there. He thought he was preaching on that phone, too. He was like, bro, this, that, and other. Laying that thing out. You know what I'm saying? He thought he had something. I was like, all right. You know what I'm saying? Well, I'm going to stop you right there because I'm almost at work. So let me just let me just take five, ten minutes of your time and just kind of shoot holes in what you were just talking about. Everything you said was all based off the air. You know what I'm saying? So he, his whole point was, uh, Moses, see, Moses made a mistake because he was talking about we can eat certain meats, but see, Jeremiah told us that God didn't tell us about sacrifices. So we would only eat meat because of sacrifices. You know what I'm saying? And that was all Moses' concoction. Moses came up with that stuff. That's why when the Messiah came, he said, did not Moses tell you this? And did not Moses? That was Moses. It's separate. So I said, yeah, we're going to have to, uh, we're going to have to, we're going to have to go ahead and lay some foundation here. You know what I'm saying? We, uh, we're just going to have to lay it, right? We're going to have to make sure we clean this stuff up. So I took him through the whole book and just try to, you know what I'm saying? Just try to let him know what, what it meant when Jeremiah was saying he wasn't talking about sacrifices. You know what I'm saying? We learned it already, right? We looked at it. They went up to the mount. Most High God spoke how many commandments from the mount? Oh, ten commandments out of that mouth. When he got to that tenth, what did we say to him? Moses make him stop. We like, we don't want to hear no more. If we didn't say that, most High God would have kept going, wouldn't he? So instead, the next set of commandments came from who? Moses. Moses. He went up there, got the rest of the commandments, brought them on down. Out of those commandments, did we hear about sacrifices at all? Right? From Exodus 20 on to Exodus 23, no sacrifices. Huh? Oh, yeah. yeah, sacrifice didn't come until after we did what? Right? After the sacrifices, Moses went back up for how many days? And what did he learn about that second time he went up? Sacrifice. That's when he learned about the temple. The tabernacle. Right? Most High God, when he showed him the tabernacle, what did Most High God say? Uh, come up with the designs on your own? What did he tell him? Make it after how I tell you. He said, I'm showing you something in heaven. You need to make it exactly like that. So when he made it, according to Most High God, exactly like that, what was part of that that sacrifices had to do with? Mm. Cleanse them. But what was what was the artifact that they used to make sacrifices? Uh, it was altar in it, wasn't it? Awesome. So I mean, I'm just trying to figure out if God didn't want nobody making sacrifice, what the altar there for? He just put the altar there. They had cold. That's what it was. Sometimes the desert get cold. So you just want to light a fire and everybody crowd around. Just shut your mouth. These people just run their darn mouth and they don't know. They don't know. So I asked him after I explained that to him, he's still kind of resisting it. So I asked him, I'm like, right, let me stop you. What is this really about? You know what I'm saying? Is it about like not eating food? And he came clean. He's honest about it. He's like, you know what? I just can't see how how eating meat, you know what I'm saying? God could approve that. So there's nothing that you could really say. I just know that that's not right. I was like, all right, that's all I need to know. I appreciate your time and you have a good that's it. I ain't got no time. So when you, because what he's done now, he made the qualifier to food. Food just became his God. Right? Because now it don't matter what the word says. The word don't mean that. If he would have told me, you know what, I'm looking at this verse and I just don't see it that way, bro. That I can I can continue to talk to you because it's like you're letting the word dictate what you believe. Soon you say, you know what? Mm, I just like vegetables. I do. I like vegetables a lot. I don't really like beef too much. You know, I don't see how God can make something because I don't like it. That don't make sense to me. You think God making rules and laws based off of what you like? Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Right? People just don't know. They don't know. They make laws and they make their understanding and their interpretation of the Bible based off of what they see in the world or what they experience. That's why we say in the beginning, 
No matter what, whether you have a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience, it does not matter. If you don't obey, your butt is going to hell. I don't care what you say. I don't care if you don't obey the book. I don't care if you say God was walking right next to you when you got hit by the car. Your butt going to hell. It doesn't matter. There's nothing that God is ever going to do to put it against his word. He said if you don't obey, you're going to hell. So now instead of us accepting that, what we do is make excuses, try to work around it. That way we ain't got to repent. That way we ain't got to feel bad about ourselves. It's all about us. Right? I can feel saved even though I'm living like a, like a hypocrite. Makes a whole lot of sense. All compromise. Right? You remember April? Yeah. April from... Uh, you brought her to Bible study, right? Yeah, you remember April. Uh, Janae. Janae. Jasmine April, sorry. Jasmine. April. Uh, I'm going to stop saying that. But you know what I'm saying? Oh, whatever. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? We, uh, you know what I'm saying, we knew a young lady, and she keep in touch every now and again. She even been by the Bible study a few times. And she, uh, she, uh, she hit me up. She was like, what do you think about the gap theory? You know what I'm saying? Like, first I had to think about that. I was like, gap theory? What is the gap theory again? That thing dawned on me. I was like, the gap theory. The gap theory. I said, that thing all poop. And I was like, what do you think about it? I want to know if she knew what it was. You know what I'm saying? Like, what you really know? She was like, Honestly, I don't really know much about it. Somebody at work would tell me about it. I don't know. You just stay away from yourself. You know what I'm saying? The gap theory. The gap theory is Genesis 1. Right? Genesis 1. You know what I'm saying? Genesis 1. Okay. God made. So this. Let me back it up. Let me back it up. I know. I know where you go. This is how people compromise. Right? This is why people compromise and start making their belief of the Bible based off of what everybody else is talking about. So scientists come to us. And what do they tell us? We started off as monkeys, billion years past, we turned into human beings. Dinosaurs were here, billions of years past, then dinosaurs no longer here. The world was just a big bang, billion year, billions of years past, then it turns into the earth as we see it today, moon, stars, sun, all this stuff came from a big old life. So an explosion created everything. An explosion came out of nowhere and created everything, right? So this is what they tell us, and they tell us, in order to prove this, they say, we need billions and billions of light years, billions and billions of years to make this happen. So their, their hypothesis, their, their, their thought is, their theory is, that the earth is billions of years old. That's incompatible with the Bible, right? Because the Bible tells you the most I made the world in how many days? Six days he made it, and the seventh he rested, Right? You know what I'm saying? It's a six days he made the thing, and then he rested. And so he said, oh, that was good work there. And then rested. Right? So we look at that, we be like, mm, that means the earth only, you know, about 6,000 years old, if you look at what the Bible calculates. Right? We know y'all was was gone 2,000 years ago. Right? And if you calculate everything else, you can stretch maybe 5,000 years before that, but it's going to be about 4,000. Right? So it's about 6,000 years. So you look at that and you're like, mm, Earth ain't that old. So y'all telling these billions of years ain't gonna work. But the scientists, you know what they got? Evidence. They lay this stuff out on you and be like, mm, but what about this? And what does the Bible say about this? What does the Bible say about this? He, they get to laying that stuff on people. People gonna be like, I don't know about that. Right? You get these Christian churches, and the pastor don't wanna touch it. So what they did to come up with a compromise, because otherwise you're gonna send your kids to these schools, these scientific schools. They Christians, good Christians. Then they gonna light your kid butt up because the only kid, the only thing your kid gonna say is what the Bible says. And the scientists like, that's not the scientific theory. We've tested it, we've researched, and this, that, and other. And they gonna make your kid feel dumb. So what the parents start doing, and what the what the uh, what the pastors start doing, they start saying, you know what, we gotta figure out a way to make this thing work. So you know, the first compromise I think was, you know what, maybe it wasn't six literal days, like twenty four hours. Maybe each day represented a period of time. So it wasn't six days, it was like six sets of 24 million days. Right? And so 24 million days or 24 more million years go by, and then guess what you got? One day. Right? Even though the most I got very clearly say there was evening and there was morning, and that was the day. But that was these people, they come up with this stuff, right? So then 
Christians didn't find that thing acceptable. They was like, mm, too hard. I see even in the morning, don't make sense. We need something else. So you know the next thing they came up with? The gap theory. They said, no, six literal days. One, two, three, four, five, six days. That's it, right? But that's the end of chapter one. And then chapter two, guess what he come back and say? He rested on the seventh. So they said in between chapter one and chapter two, there was billions of years. So he created the world six literal days, billions of years went by, then he rested on the seventh day after a billion years. And then he goes. So that's the gap theory. They say it's a gap in time. The way they support that is they say Genesis chapter one is talking about a different set of people than Genesis chapter two. Right? So Genesis chapter 2, this is what they say. Genesis chapter 2 says Adam, he created a male and female. But Genesis chapter 2, I mean, I'm sorry, Genesis chapter 1 say Adam created a male and female. Genesis chapter 2 is talking about the Adam that we know Adam. You know what I'm saying? Adam and Eve. You know what I'm saying? So that's two different groups. It was grouped before. So you look at this stuff. And I, I kind of explained that, and I told you, you know, don't even worry about it. You know what I'm Matter of fact, I'm going to use it. I'm going to cut this up and make a video for it. And be like, listen, just show, share it with your friend. But you look at it, and it doesn't make any sense. But what, it, what does it come from? Why do people feel comfortable making those type of decisions about the Bible? Only because they don't know it. Right? That's the only reason. And that's why we have to get out. That's the disservice that pastors have done our people. Or the people at all. Right? The white Christians, everybody. They've done a disservice to people because they haven't really taught them the book. So when this stuff comes along, it's easy to be like, oh, that makes sense. Like, we know when we hear that, we like, that don't make no darn sense. Oh, what you talking about? But for people who don't know, they're looking like, well, that kind of makes sense. A gap theory, right? How do you know? If somebody just tell you the Bible says God created in six days, right? And then somebody come back and be like, well, yeah, but the Hebrew word for days doesn't necessarily mean 24-hour days. If that's all you know and you never read it yourself, You'll be like, oh, yeah, it could be 24 million years in that one day, right? You don't really know. But once you start reading it yourself and you start getting the context and you start paying attention, you start doing it, you start living after it, most like God reveal all this stuff to you, right? Once you understand the context, once you understand that the Bible star, our Genesis, matter of fact, let me show you all real quick. This is Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. Give me Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image. Uh-huh. After our likeness. Uh-huh. Let him have dominion over the fish of the sea. Uh-huh. And over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth. Uh -huh. And over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. Uh-huh. So God created man in his own image, and the image of God created he him. Uh-huh. Male and female created he them. He said, male and female created he them. Right, so according to their terrible theory, it's talking about a whole different people. All right, so let's keep going. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it. Uh -huh. And have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. Uh huh. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth, uh -huh. and every tree in which is the fruit of the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you it shall be for me. Uh-huh. And every beast of the earth, and every fowl of the air, and to everything that creeps upon the earth wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for me. Uh-huh. And it was so. And God so me and God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the, mo and the morning were the sixth day. So that was the sixth day. That was six days. Watch this. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. So according to them, the gap already happened. Billions of years passed. Now this seventh day come after a billion years. Makes sense. Keep going. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created, God created and made. Now watch what he said next. These are the generations of the heavens. These the are the what? The generations. That's the key word. If we saw that and we understood the book, we would know exactly what the Most High God was telling us. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth. The whole book of Genesis are about generations. So if we look at this, 
generations of the heavens and the earth. Next thing we hear about is Adam. Then we hear about Eve. So it gives us a narrative next, right? It told us the generations, heavens and the earth. This day produced this. This day produced this. This day produced this. This day produced this. Sixth day produced what? Man, right? So it gave us the genealogy of earth. The sixth day produced the man. Of this man was Adam. So now let me tell you a little bit about Adam. I made a woman for him named Eve. They had a child. It was Cain and Abel. After Cain and Abel got into it, Abel died. Then Cain went off. But they had another child. His name was what? Seth. Once I get you to Seth, guess what I can talk to you about again? Generations. Fast forward. Let's go to uh, uh, Genesis chapter 4. Give me the last verse. What's the last verse? No, not the last verse. Give me like the last, the third to the last verse. And Lamech said to his wives. What's the, what is it? Eight and zero, 23. 23. Give me 24. If Cain shall be avenged. No, give me 25. And Adam knew his wife again, and she bare a son and called his name Seth. Right? So she said, she bear, I mean, uh, the book say that she bare a son. His name was Seth. Now, after you see this, we're going to keep reading to the next chapter. Notice, once we get to Seth, it stops, and it starts talking about generations again. I'll show you why. Keep going. The Genesis chapter 5, verse 1. This is the book of the generations of Adam. And the day that God created man in the likeness of God made him. Right? So we see it started off generations of the earth. Right? Sixth day. It all the way into the sixth day. And we see the sixth day produced Adam. After that, then it gets into a narrative that tells us about Adam. It tells us about his children. And it tells us about Seth. Then we get to Seth. Adam, kids, be quiet in there. Then it, gets, then it gets to Seth. After it gets to Seth, then it produces more children, right, in the generations of Adam. So now we look at all the kids, read on until it gets to Seth. This is the book of the generations of Adam, and the day that God created man in the likeness of God made he him. Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. We're going to come back to that because that kills the whole story too, but let's keep going. And Adam lived 130 years and begot a son in his own likeness after his image. And what was his name? Was his name Cain? His father's name Seth. Notice he didn't talk about Cain or Abel, right? They only told you about Seth. That's the only reason that the story got up to Seth. Adam had other children, right? But it only told you enough to get you to Seth. Once it gets to Seth, nothing else matters. Because guess what? Seth had children. So now, this whole book goes all the way through all the Seth's, Seth's bloodline until it gets to a man named Noah. Go to the last verse. So now this is the generations of Adam through the line of Seth, and it gets to a man named Noah. Watch this. And Noah was 500 years old, and Noah begot Shem, Ham, and Jacob. Now, if you go to the next chapter, chapter 6, it's going to tell you how a flood is about to come. And guess who they picked out? Noah. The most high God picked out Noah so that Noah can build an ark and he can ride on that ark. Why is the book telling us about Noah? Because Noah's special? No. Because Noah's going to have sons. And of all the sons, one of them is going to become the tribe that leads to Abraham. So it gives us a narrative about Noah going on the ark. He went on the ark. The whole world got flooded. And after the whole world got flooded, he and his sons went on there. One of his sons, named Seth, are the sons that produce a line. Let's go to chapter 11. So it gives us a narrative all the way through this. Once we get to chapter 11, verse... Uh, what verse is it? Chapter 11, maybe verse uh, 12? 10. 10. This is chapter 11, verse 10. These are the generations of Shem. Shem was 100 years old and begot Arpachshad. So Shem ago. is the son of Noah, right? So now it's getting back to generations. It gave you a whole narrative about Noah, his sons, what they did, how the earth flooded. Then it gets you to Shem. Then all of a sudden it tells you about Shem and all the sons that Shem had. Go to the last verse on this one. Guess where it stops? And the days of Terah were 205 years, and Terah did in and Terah died in Haran. Mm -hmm. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country. Unto who? Abram. That's where it stops. It starts with Abram. Guess who Abram ends up being? Abraham. Guess who Abraham ends up having? Isaac. 
Guess who Isaac ends up having? Jacob. And guess what God calls Jacob? Israel. The whole book is giving you only a gap of a narrative to get you to the next generation. So when we look at the book, it's always going to give you generations that's high level, and then it goes into detail about that one person. Same thing with Genesis 1. It gave you generations of the heavens and the earth. When it got to day 6, then in chapter 2, it went into detail about that one person because it needed to give you that narrative to show you how we get to the next phase. Because eventually we have to get to Israel. And the only reason we get into Israel is so we can get to who? Yahweh Shu. These people don't know nothing about no book. They talking about gap theory. You throw that out. Once you throw out the meaning of why Genesis runs the way it runs, then you throw out the meaning of the, what the Most High God is doing. Just because they don't know. So you start making all these assumptions, making a darn mess out of the book, leading all these people to stray. Now letting these signs to tell you that the earth been around for billions of years. And that they're letting you believe, letting you make, they making you believe that they got evidence for it. Show me how you going to have evidence. Show me scientific method, method is what? To be able to test it and reproduce it. Tell me how you going to reproduce a Big Bang. Show me. Show me another Big Bang. I'll tell you what, I'll make it easy for you. Just show me how a rock can turn into anything other than a rock. Just do whatever you need to do to make a rock turn into anything other than a rock. Tell me how a beat, you take a flashlight, because what they say is there's a big old bang of light and it turned into everything. You just show me a flashlight and somehow make that flashlight turn into water. I mean, just show me. They say it's evolution, right? They say everything used to be one thing and then it spanned out to all these other things. Just show me how a cat after some period of time, going to turn into a dog. Or a, lion. or a lion even, right? You got a feline, right? All of them are of the feline family. Because, I mean, a cat and a lion do kind of look similar sometimes. I mean, you take, like, a baby lion, put it up against, like, a nice fat cat. You be looking at them and be like, all right, they're the same. Just show me one lion that ever became a cat or vice versa. Just show me a cat that ever became a lion. Like, just whatever you need. Get a scientist whatever resources he need. Tell him to make that thing happen. They ain't going to never do it. But they're going to look you in the face and be like, no, we got proof. I ain't got no darn proof. He cut that out. He ain't never seen no monkey become a human being. These people sit here and lie to us. Make a, just make complete fools out of us. And we sit here and believe it just because they keep throwing all this fake evidence, all this skewed evidence. And the only reason we can't see through their stuff, because we don't know it. Only reason they don't accept the Bible because they don't know it and they don't care to know it. That's good. I don't need to know y'all stuff. Guess what I'm going to know? I know this book. This book been around for thousands of years. I trust that. Y'all come up with a new theory. Just last year, y'all were telling me chocolate was good for my heart. Guess what they're saying this year? Chocolate bad. Can make you fat. Bad for your arteries. Oh, they just, every darn year, they got something else. Red meat, good for you. Get your blood flowing. Nice proteins, healthy for you. Red meat, bad this year. This year, no, nah, red meat, you don't want no red meat. You got to leave that red meat alone. Stop all that. Every year, y'all come out with something different. And I'm supposed to trust y'all. Show me where this book was different. They try to point out something. They make a fool out of themselves, but they don't get it. All right? Show me where the book was different. It's all about making sure we understand this book, making sure these people cannot knock us off of the truth. We got the truth. All we got to do is stand up. He gave it to us. He didn't give it to these other folk. He gave it to us so that we can teach the other folk. We the one that, that failed us. He gave us the book so we can teach it to other people and we the ones that failed. It's our chance now to get the book, learn it again, and go out there and teach it to these people with love. And I ain't talking about this fake love where everything I say to you is nice. I'm talking about real love where I want to see you do better. And to make sure you do better, I'm going to hold you accountable. And after I hold you accountable, I'm going to help you up. I'm going to pick you up and I'm going to carry you as far as you want to go, but you got to want it. They let all these other people talk to them all crazy. You know what I'm saying? Let these people talk to you. You go to the military, these people talk to you crazy. I ain't trying to talk to you crazy. Only thing I'm trying to do, you know what I'm trying to do? I'm just trying to help you. I'm just trying to make sure you, you, you meet the man that I met. You learn about the man that I learned about. That's it. I ain't calling you out your name. I ain't making you... They make you scrub the darn floor with toothbrush. They ain't know what they do in the movies. I believe that thing. Make you do all this ridiculous stuff. And guess what they say? God bless America. Y'all some crazy darn people. Most like all he wants you to do is stop sinning. He has to y'all say to him. God ain't real. 
is a hoax. That's the white man religion. Meanwhile, you in a white man military and scrubbing his darn floor. How many black colonels you didn't see over anything meaningful? In a white man, y'all need to cut that stuff out. Y'all don't know nothing about this book. White man religion. It was Hebrews that wrote this. Black people that wrote this. What's wrong with y'all? It's Leviticus chapter 11. Let's get to the book. It's Leviticus chapter 11. Last week we left off. We were talking about uh, we were talking about cleanliness. We were talking about how serious the Most High God when it came to the Most High God was when it came to uh, cleanliness. That's what we want to learn about now. We want to learn about cleanliness. Baby, do me a favor. Turn that TV down a little bit. Clean air. We can drive as many diesel vehicles as we wanted to if we had, you know what I'm saying? 
Hey, light the thing up. These people don't listen no more. So I've got been trying to tell them for years. So to the animals that chew the cud, their food is purified more so than any other. That's chewing the cud. Right? That's how we that's how we look at it, right? That's how we look at it. When we look into it with chewing the cud, we figure out what we we you know what I'm saying, we look at it and we say, what what could be the benefit of this? That's what we say about it. The book don't necessarily tell us that. Book just say, look at the animal chew the cud. Honestly, you say that's good enough for me. I don't need it. all this other stuff is extra. You know what I'm saying? That thing, that thing's in clean. I mean, that's good enough for me. Right? Animal chew the cut, put the hook. That, what else you think? That's it. I'm good. That thing's good enough for me. But you start looking into it, you know, why why might God say that? That's a theory, right? God might be saying it just because that thing cleaner than the rest of the animals. Yeah, I looked it up, like with chewing the cud, and when they explained the thing with the cow, it was digested, and it purified, and spit it back up, and it digested again. It's like more pure. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That thing, that thing makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Even if it don't, though, guess what I'm rolling with? I'll take your word for it. You know what I'm saying? Even, you know these signs, you know how these signs they do it. Oh, you don't know anything about a cow. I just dissected one, and the cow does this, and they have 23 enzymes in there that can mess up your, you know, they'll come out with something. And you won't know, because you ain't dissecting. You ain't about to put your hand under no darn cow and watch him chew some darn cud. So you don't really know whether he lying or telling the truth. So what you gonna do? You know, that's his profession. You know he really cut open the cow. Ain't nobody gonna believe you if you told him you were lying. You know what I'm saying? That's how people end up backing off. You know what I'm saying? It don't matter what it say. That's how I go with. It. All right, you say you got in, but all right, well I chew my I chew I chew my cow that chew cud, and you chew whatever you want. We'll see how it end up for it. That's it. That just back. You want to test? You know what I'm saying? You want to test that thing? I'm a scientist. Like they want to, they want to test and reproduce. Use me. I'm gonna chew my cud. You 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 do whatever it is you do, and we'll see. You know what I'm saying? You just test me. Let's see. Let's see how it turned out. You know, I don't got trust the most high God. Let's keep going. And the swine, though he divide the hoof and be cloven footed, yet he choose not to cut. He is unclean to you. I think I think unclean. Of their flesh shall ye not eat, and their carcass shall ye not touch. Uh huh. They are unclean to you. That's a book. Bees shall ye eat of all that are in the waters. Whatsoever has fins and scales in the waters, in the seas and in the rivers, them shall ye eat. Right? So he said, if it's in the water and that thing got a fin and it got a darn scale, you good. He said, eat away. Eat your darn salmon. Eat your darn what else? Tilapia. Your tilapia. Tuna. Your darn tuna. Right? All them darn fish you got a darn. It got a fin and it got scale. Take that thing out the darn water and throw that thing in the frying pan. What's wrong with you? Catfish, unclean. Catfish though, that thing ain't got a fin. That thing ain't got a fin. Ain't got no scales. That thing got no skin. You know what I'm saying? No scales. Nah, ain't got no scales though. You gotta leave that thing alone. Alright? You gotta leave that thing alone. You know what I'm saying? You got your lobster, your crawfish. You know what I'm saying? I used to like clam chowder. Mm -mm. Clams? I don't see a fin or a darn scale on a clam. That's crazy. How you gonna eat some clam chowder? All that stuff, gotta leave that stuff alone. Lobster, crabs, all that stuff, mm -mm, leave that stuff alone. That's book, right? Ain't got a fin and ain't got scale, right? Leave that hot and juicy alone. I know what's wrong with y'all. Keep going. Shrimp, ugh. Shrimp, ugh. Roach. All that stuff, all these things are darn rodents of the sea. Keep going. And all that have not fins and scales in the seas and in the rivers and of all that move in the waters and of any living thing which is in the waters, they shall be an abomination unto you. Uh -huh. They shall be even an ab abomination unto you. Ye shall not eat of their flesh, but you shall, you shall have their carcasses in abomination. Uh -huh. Whatsoever has no fins nor scales in the waters, that shall be an abomination to you. That's an abomination. Boy, what you eating that for? Right. And, Keep going. and these are they which ye shall have an abomination among the fowls. Mm -hmm. They shall not be eaten. Alright? Keep going. They are an abomination. The eagle. He said, Don't you eat a darn eagle. These white folks like that. They, you know, they, they, they protect the endangered eagle. You mess around. Let one of these white folks catch you trying to eat a darn eagle. Yeah. Wig the fit. Wig out on your darn butt. Don't you eat no eagle. They agree with God on that one now. Keep going. And the ossifrage. Alright, is it don't you eat the osprey? Osprey is like uh it's like a uh, it's like a uh, like a not a hawk, you know what I'm saying? Maybe it's like a hawk, you know what I'm saying? It's like a it's like a fluffy, fluffy bird, you know what I'm saying? But like like a hawk kinda. You know what I'm saying? And the 
Osprey. Or maybe that's the Osprey. Osprey, I think Osprey is more like a vulture. And I think the Osprey is, uh, Osprey might be, I think the Osprey, I think, is like a Seahawk or something like that. And the vulture. Uh huh. And the kite after his kind. Kite is a little bird, you know what I'm saying? That's where the kites came from, you know what I'm saying? Where, you know, they fly a kite, that's where they came from. It's a bird that kind of got the wings fan like that. Every raven after his kind. No ravens, can't have no raven. And the owl. Can't have no darn owls. And the nighthawk. Can't have a nighthawk. That's probably a nighthawk. And the cacao. Uh huh. And the hawk after his kind. Uh huh. And the little owl. Uh mm huh. -hmm. And the cormorant. Uh mm huh. -hmm. And the great owl. Uh mm huh. -hmm. And the swan. Uh mm huh. -hmm. And the pelican. And the pelican. No stork. You know what you say now? A stork? Yeah. Can't have no stork, you know what I'm saying? No, no, no. Kid. That's, that's next, yeah. Uh, the stork in there, what we got? And the uh, gear eagle. The gear eagle. And the stork. And the stork, you know what I'm saying? You know how they said, of course, the stork bring the kids. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You better let that stork bring them babies on. Don't try to eat no stork. What's wrong with you? Keep going. The heron after her kind. Man, these people are always, people on heron right now. <laughs> you must be on heron, you ain't the heron. And Keep the going. lap wig. And the bat. Mm hmm. Can't eat no darn bats. All the fowls that creep going upon all fours shall be an abomination unto you. Uh-huh. Yet these may ye eat of every flying, creeping thing that goes upon all four, which have legs above their feet to leap with all upon the earth. When they say creeping thing, it's talking about uh, bugs. You know what I'm saying? He's saying, these are, this is what you may eat uh, of, of all the bugs. The locust after his kind, and the bald locust after his kind, and the beetle after his kind, that's good. <laughs> and the grasshopper after his kind. That ain't nasty, but that, you know what I'm saying? That's what he's saying. If it came down to it, that's what we can eat now. You know what I'm saying? If I ever got stranded somewhere, I'm looking for the grasshopper. Came down to it, came down to it, you can eat you a beetle now. You know what I'm saying? You can eat you a grasshopper, a locust. You know what I'm saying? Just, I mean, if it came down to it. You know what I'm saying? He said, that thing clean. And John the Baptist ain't locust. You know, so John the Baptist ain't locust. I that's book. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's book. You know what I'm saying? Don't you forget about that beetle. You never know what a beetle tastes like. That thing might taste all right. You know what I'm saying? Crunch into that thing. Timon and poop with that little. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Mean no words. Where do you think they got it from? Nasty butts. All right? Keep going. But all other flying, creeping things which have four feet shall be an abomination unto you. Right? So we look at it, and the book is telling us, this is what you eat. This is what you don't eat. This is what you eat. This is what you don't eat. Trying to line us up, trying to make sure that we are all right, right? Trying to bring us together, make sure that we have everything we need. Then you got people, he tell us very clearly, this is what you can eat, this is what you don't eat. And these people go too far and they say, you know what? Don't eat no meat. Don't eat no meat. Just eat, just eat vegetables. And in Genesis 1, we just read, he told Adam, he said, I'm giving you all the earth to eat. They say, you know what? Ain't nothing wrong with just eating vegetables, Right? We got Daniel in our book, that's what he did. He said, nah, just give me the pulse, right? Just give me the vegetables. That's because they had too much unclean stuff. He didn't know what he was eating. You know what I'm saying? But still, he made the choice. He said, you know, nowadays, you don't know what you eat either. Technically, right? You look at these people, you don't know what these people, you ain't preparing your own food, you don't know what you So it's okay if a person was like, you know what? I'm good. I'm not eating none of these people food. I'm just give me the pulse, right? Ain't nothing wrong with that. Like, if you do that, that's fine. You know what's wrong, though? When you come to other people and be like, Nah, you ain't, supposed to be you ain't supposed to be eating that. Right? You ain't supposed to be eating that. The book said you ain't supposed to be eating that. Nah, the book didn't say that. Right? The book is very clear. Matter of fact, go to uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4. It's 1 Timothy chapter 4. Give me verse 1. Timothy chapter 4 verse 1 
Alright? That thing becomes tradition. Alright? And tradition is fine. Like if I if I say I if, if I say me and my family, we don't eat meat. If I say that, I say, you know what, Tasha, you ain't eating no meat. Zahara, you ain't eating no meat. Zakai, you ain't eating no meat. Only thing we eat around here is pulse. We only eat vegetables. That thing fine. That's my family. Now, if I isn't looking at my family or looking at anybody else, tell them, you know what? If you eat meat, you go to hell. Right? If you eat meat, you defy. If you eat meat, you ain't of God. That's when you messed up. Because now your tradition become more than it become more than what God said. Because God said one thing, you said another thing. And guess what got to take precedent in your house? What God said. I mean, what you said. Right? Don't add to it. Don't take it from Just do what the book said. That's it. You can do what you want with them, what the books say, but don't get to teaching people against it. Now you make a mess out of your darn self. This is uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Now the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. All right, he said the Spirit speaks very clearly that people are going to depart from the faith and they're going to start listening to the whole bunch of crap. All right? People going to start running their mouth listening to a whole bunch of lies. I don't know why this stuff is in the book and people don't listen to it. They get mad at me because I be trying to tell them. I be like, really, honestly, I would love to be able to say something else. But all they can do. You, I mean, I don't care what you do. No matter who you go to, chances are they lying to you. Right? They get mad because they want me, they want you know what they want you to say. Well, you know, there's other people out there and this guy, he does good. This guy, that's what they want you to say. They want you to be, you know what I'm saying? That pastor, he's good too, and this, that, and other. Because it's friendly. I don't have time to be doing being friendly for the sake of being friendly. I'll be friendly if it's true. But I can't lie to you. I ain't met one. Ain't met one. Have it. And if I did meet one, I'd be with him. Period. If I met one, I'd be with him. That's it. It's just us. That's it. You know what I'm saying? Does that mean that that's everybody in the entire world? No, I don't believe. Right? Only reason I don't believe that, because I know there was another man in the book that felt the way I feel right now, and his name was Elijah. And when he felt this way and he got the yelling at God, like, man, you let all the prophets die. Most like God said, no, I reserve for myself 7,000 to have him bow to me to bed. Right? So because I saw that, I always remind myself, like, even though I haven't met these brothers and sisters, I'm pretty sure they out there. But if somebody asks me, like, is there anybody out there? I can't tell them no lie and be like, yeah, that's them over there. Yeah, then I can't tell you no lie. I don't know. All I can tell you is, I ain't seen it. Right? And y'all can take that. They can take it how they want. They can take it as, but he just hating. He trying to keep everybody to himself. That make a whole lot of sense. There's three people in this darn room saying, right now. It's always been like that. You know what I'm saying? It's about max 40 people, 50 people watch online. Max. And that's all the way around the darn world. I ain't trying to keep nobody clear. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 50 in the whole Let me tell you something. I ain't trying to kill. I'm not trying to keep nothing. That's killing time for me. Only thing I'm trying to tell you is, if you believe this is the truth, and I can confirm it with the book, just sit down and learn. That's it. Sit down and learn. What you still looking for something else for? If it's not the truth, bye. See you later. First tell me that it's not the truth. Show me where I'm making the error at. But after you do that, if you want, bye. See you later. Cool. I ain't got time to convince nobody who don't want to be convinced. I convince you if you want to be convinced. Now, if you looking like, listen, just tell me how this thing works. Well, I spend my whole day convincing that but If you want to be convinced, I'm not trying to change your mind. You believe that, you believe that. If you're willing to open up your mind and, and listen to the truth, then I'm your man. But I ain't trying to, I ain't tap dancing for nobody. That's crazy. I got the truth. I got the truth. Why well, I'm gonna sit here and tap dance because I really, really want you to have it. Please. I'm like, the, I'm like the parable of the ten virgins. You know what I'm saying? Ten of them. They, you know what I'm saying? Wasted their darn oil. They didn't go out. You know what I'm saying? They came time they needed that thing. They was like, let us borrow some oil from the other five virgins. The other five was like, listen, we mess around, and give you some of our oil. We might not have none for ourselves. That's how I am. I'm like, man, I got the truth. You know what I'm saying? I mess around, waste too much time trying to tap dance for you, trying to get you to believe. I might lose this thing by darn self. I got it. You know what I'm saying? We good. Only people I got oil for is the ones that, uh, the one that, uh, you know what I'm saying, one that, you know what I'm saying, the ones that, the one that had the truth, that's looking for it. Right? Because that means you already got oil. 
Most high God already put the spirit in you. Alright? Keep going. He said all these people are going to be believing lies out here. Keep going. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. You know what I mean? When you see it, alright. So when you cook, you know what I'm saying? You cook, you know what I'm saying? Or when you grill, you know what I'm saying? You put some, put some meat on there and they say you what seared, right? You know what that does to the meat after you sear it? Tenderize it. Tenderize it? Oh, it burns it. But, you know. What did what it do to the outside? It's crispy. It's that thing get tough on the outside. On the inside, it stay the same, right? But on the outside, that thing get rough, right? Where it's harder to break through, right? So when they say searing, it's just making their brain impenetrable. It's searing their conscience. Making their conscience where if you take your hand and you just put it on top of fire, what is it going to feel like afterwards? It's going to burn. But after you're done burning, when you get to touch your hand, are you going to feel anything? No. You ain't gonna feel darn nothing after your hand get done. You gonna have skin that rolls over it to protect it, and you're not gonna feel anything. He ain't gonna be numb, right? That's how it is. Your conscience, you impenetrable, right? These people they get to telling all these lies, all this hypocrisy. That's why when we go to these churches and we talk to these pastors, we don't move them one bit. We be laying. Listen, we didn't lay this whole thing out for these pastors. But look, you open up an it page. All these other dudes, these leaders in Hebrew camps and all that. But look, you look at this, and then you do that. They didn't tell so many lies. They conscious. It don't even matter. They can look at the book and they can see it. And just like that dude I was talking to on the phone, he look. It don't even matter what you tell me. He literally said it. It don't even matter what you tell me. I know that God would make it to where you can eat meat. You know what that tells me? What you saying make absolute sense, Fillmore. But you know what? I'm still not gonna go with it because it's conscious to see it, right? All this stuff that the book is doing for us, you got to have a mind for it. You got to have a mind. That's why the book tells you, no man comes to the Father except what? There's no way you're going to get to the Son. No man comes to the Son, rather. No man comes to the Son except the Father who sent me first draw him. He said, and it is written in the prophets, prophets, that they shall all be taught of Yah. Therefore, any man who has heard and has learned of the Father comes to the Messiah. That's it. How you gonna get to him unless you hear and learn? How you gonna hear and learn unless the Father draw you? That's crazy. The whole thing lined up for us. It's all, it's all, it's these other people that sit here confounded about this stuff. Hey, the whole thing makes sense. Open up the book. Who you know break down all the all the revelations for you and prove it out with the book? I ain't here talking about no. When it talks about locusts, it's really talking about a helicopter shooting missiles. Oh, please, you can cut that stuff out. <laughs> ain't killing no time to talk about this, this conjecture. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm only showing you what's in the book. If I can't show it to you in the book, why am I wasting my time? It might be a darn helicopter. Or it might be a darn locust. <laughs> well, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to go on both. I don't know. I'm going to show you what's in the book, though. I'm going to show you that, that the man to see ain't going to come out of Greece. That's book. These people don't listen, though. Keep going. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats which God has created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. You know, see these people? When I, when I got married, a little bit after I got married, I walked into the barbershop. You know what I'm saying? And I told this story before. But I walked into the barbershop and there was an older, it was an older gentleman there, you know what I'm saying? And I was talking about, you know what I'm saying? They talking about me and they like, you know what I'm saying? They talking about, yeah, you about to get married. I was really already married, but nobody really knew. You know what I'm saying? They talking about, yeah, you about to get married next. It's another. I was like, I might, you know what I'm saying? What's going on? And so, you know what I'm saying? The dude was like, what? You gonna get married? Yeah. Don't do it. Don't do it. Older man, he's like, don't do it. Trust me. Don't do it. Start making jokes and all this stuff. He's like, man. And you young, you know what I'm saying? You why you want to lock yourself down? Is that do it after you even got everything out? You old, don't nobody want you. I was like, yeah, that make a whole lot of sense, my man. I was like, how you doing right now? You married? You know what I'm saying? Like, no, I'm still out here getting it in. I was like, that, that, that what you doing? You still out here getting it in? I was like, you all right? You all right out here? He's like, yeah, man, I'm doing great. I was like, all right. All right, well, I'm about to get married. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All right. You know he miserable. The girls be telling the married girls be telling the senior girls that work out. Yeah. Where do you think this stuff come from? That they go home and love their husbands while the single girl loves them. Only because it's cool. Only because it's cool.
cool. It's cool to do that. Forbidden the mirror. That's a book. That's a book. People don't know what this stuff means. We sit and read it, and they just see it play out right in their life. And they say, they don't even know that the oh, well, the Bible written by the white man. Oh, shut up. Shut up. Books in here playing out right in front of your life, and you're going to sit here and pretend like it ain't. See here, forbidden to marry. All right? Forbidden to marry, what up? Abstaining from meats. And God is abstaining created. from meats that what? Which God has created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. And what up? Because all what? For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. He tell you very clearly. You know what I'm saying? You better eat that food. Pray over and you eat that darn food. Thank God for it and you eat that darn food. What's wrong with you? All right? The reason why the most high God laid up the laws were because he was trying to teach us how to be clean. All right? We the cleanest people. We were the cleanest people. They'd tell us that Africans and you know what I'm saying? Put holes in their lips and cutting their stuff and do all this stuff. You read our law, it's totally against that stuff. African running around putting poop on themselves and all this. All that stuff they show you on National Geographic and all that stuff, that's not us. That would not, they would like you to believe it. That's what, you know, they'd like you think, to believe that America did us a favor by taking us out of Africa. That's what they'd like you to believe. Because we were savages and, and uncivilized and all that. That wasn't us. Y'all can tell that lie about these other folks. That wasn't us. Y'all can't tell that lie on us. Our people are still civilized. They said, uh, the historian dude, they said that they prefer the ones that they prefer because... Because they can handle us. Because of our work ethic, work ethic and because of the way we work. They can handle us. We wasn't about to come over there with a whole bunch of diseases. If you would have took one of these Africans that was slamming, bathing themselves in poop, never took darn bath, and you put them on the boat and put them under the ship and let them ride like that for months. But we had to ride across the water for months, right? You think they would have lived? They would have been diseased and everybody in there would have caught disease. That thing was as rare. They were able to keep most of their cargo with us because we was clean. We didn't get dirty until they put it down there and didn't let us bathe. We was a clean people. You think that thing would have worked out with any other group of people? They know what they're darn doing. Grab uh, grab uh, Leviticus 12. First up, with more events. I read this article. They're saying they're saying that they saying you need white folks. You know what I'm saying? Years ago, you know what I'm saying. I don't know what time period. Probably like the 70s, 60s or something. You know what I'm saying? Years ago, these white folks, they doctors, they were delivering babies, going back to the next baby, delivering the baby, and wasn't washing their darn hands. And they're trying to figure out where all these babies were just dying. Cause they delivering the baby, they go to the next baby, deliver the baby, and they the, the mothers and the baby just dying. Right? And they didn't know why. You know what, you know what the solution was? Oh, just wash our hands. So at first they just start rinsing their hands with water. Right? But then they start got a little better, so start putting the sanitizer. Now you look in there, every every wall in the hospital, what they got right there? <laughs> well, every wall, what they got? The baby faces the doctor vision. Oh, the hand sanitizer. They got the hand sanitizer on every door. You can't, you can't throw a rock without hitting the hand sanitizer. You walk in and be like, oh, goodness. It makes you want to sanitize. You be like hitting all them things. Yeah, yeah, that's one too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hand be smelling like a darn. No, Baby no. butt. <laughs> Mint with alcohol. Punch. <clears throat> that thing be good, though. Right? Because they understood it. Like, oh, the cleaner we are, the safer this thing is. The more healthy these babies will be. The more healthy people will be. Now they tell you, you can't go to a darn white restaurant. You don't even work there. That thing say, please wash your hands. You know what I'm saying? You shouldn't be handling. I ain't handling no darn food. Except what I mean. But you wash them anyway. They used to teach us in school, like in the Middle Ages in Europe, they didn't. They used to always have to work alone because they stunk so bad. They stunk. They never really like bathed like that. Wasn't our people watch this? <laughs> this this Leviticus. These are white folks and these Africans that was like that. That wasn't us. All right? This Leviticus. Chapter 12, verse 1. Watch this. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speaking to the children of Israel, uh -huh. saying, If a woman hath conceived seed and born a man child, then she shall be unclean seven days. According to the days of the separation of her infirmity, shall she be unclean. So that means she got to separate herself for seven days. And I made my wife sleep in the living room for like a week. That's what I was saying. That's just because you need it. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> that wasn't flying. As much as I would have liked to, that's just what happened. Alright, keep going. We just both unclean. 
And in the eighth day, the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. Right? Eighth day, get that baby circumcised. Watch this. They messed my son up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They made me mad. Mess my darn son up. Yeah. Yo, well, you know what I'm saying? Young Gentile. I told him, I was like, you know what I'm saying? I sold out. I was like, go ahead and give me a Jewish person to do it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't think they're like, oh, well, you know, he want me to say, let this little white girl come down. I'm like, oh, she look a little my age. I don't know about that one. You know what I'm saying? I want a nice old Jewish man with a yarmulke on or something. Go ahead and chop him up. Y'all stole our stuff. Maybe you know how to do it all right. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? She did that thing, twisted the thing. You know what I'm saying? She halfway did it. was like, ooh, can't. Brought my boy back out with a bandage on. I was like, ooh, he going to have to come back when he like three months. I was like, you couldn't tell that before you chopped on him? I was like, that thing had me hot. You know what I'm saying? Had me hot. They got my, my second boy right though. You know what I'm saying? Got a nice little Japanese man. That one, you know what I'm saying? He did all right. You know what I'm I appreciate it. Yeah, my second son, on the eighth day, was a Saturday, man. And they wouldn't do it. They wouldn't do it? Nah, I had to wait till the tenth day. Nothing. You know what I'm saying? He keep going down with respect. Let's see what they're talking about. But if she bear a man child, wait. And in the eighth day, the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. Uh -huh. And if she shall continue in the blood of her purifying three and thirty days, she shall touch no hollow thing, nor come into the sanctuary until the days of her purifying be fulfilled. All right. So that's thirty-three days. She got to be separated if she have if she have a male. Who the doctor tell you? All right. So after after the son born, don't touch the wife. He said six weeks. Yeah. He said leave her alone for six weeks. All right. You know what else they tell you? Maternity leave. Where do you think these people got it from? Right? Because she got a bear. She got to go in that thing for three, three and 30 days. 33 days. Watch her if she have a girl. But if she bear a maid child, then she shall be unclean two weeks as in her separation. And she shall continue in the blood of her purifying three score and 60 days. Right? That thing longer if she have a maid child. 66 days. Ago. Right? Double everything if she have a maid child. Right? Because the Most High God took our cleanliness serious. He's like, no, I want my people to be clean. Right? I don't want nobody to get mixed up. None of the stuff that's going on. None of this, I don't want nobody to be infected. Nothing. Separate her. It's a new baby. It's a new her. Let them bond. Let them be together. Let them go. Nobody bother them. Nobody coming in and get, getting the baby sick. They separated. Right? Leave them alone. They, don't, they learn this stuff now, though. And guess what? Science is the greatest ever. We've been doing this thing for thousands of years. Don't nobody want to give God credit. They're going to try to make us seem like we got darn, darn, darn stretched out earlobes and all this weird stuff. These African got, got rings all around our neck, lip and our neck. They're trying, they're, trying, they're trying to say that's what we were. And they cut that stuff out. Go ahead, keep going. And when the days of her purifying are fulfilled for a son or for a daughter, she shall bring a lamb of the first year for a burnt offering and a young pigeon or a turtle dove for a sin offering unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation unto the priest who shall offer it before the Lord and make an atonement for her mm -hmm. and she shall be cleansed from the issue of her blood. Mm -hmm. This is the law of her that has born a male or a female. Mm -hmm. And if she be not able to bring a lamb, then she shall bring two turtle doves or two young pigeons, the one for the burnt offering and the other for a sin offering. And the priest shall make an atonement for her and she shall be cleaned. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Chapter 13, watch what it says. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, saying, When a man shall have in the skin of his flesh a rising, a scab, or a bright spot, and it be in the skin of his flesh like and a And it be in the what? Skin of his flesh. So notice this. So far, everything we read, what you should eat, right? How a woman should deal with her, her child after she have a child, right? We look at, we look at uh, uh, if you have a rising, what it's talking about is a rising in the skin of your flesh. It's talking about like a mark. Or something that come on in your flesh. If you kept reading and talking about it changing colors or something like that. You know what I'm saying? They tell us, how do we deal with it? Moses was letting us know, how do you deal with these things? But notice he's talking about our flesh. All this is talking about our flesh. All this is talking about our skin. Right? Because the Most High God was trying to help us be healthy. That's what the, all the whole law was about us being healthy. Certain parts of it was about us, our spiritual spirituality. But these parts was about us being healthy. Us living right, physically being well on earth, right? Grab a uh, grab Hebrew. 
before we grab that, grab uh, 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Home on verse 1. Uh, give me verse uh, 23. Give me verse 41. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 41. I don't want to read the whole thing, so I'm just going to go jump on now. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 41. There is one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon. And another glory of the stars, for one star differs from another star in glory. Uh -huh. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown as corruption, in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. Mm -hmm. It is sown in dishonor, and is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, and it is raised a spiritual body. Mm -hmm. There is a natural body, and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man Adam was made a living soul. Mm -hmm. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. That's right. Uh, be it, that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural. And afterward, that which is spiritual. So that which is natural is first, and then that which is spiritual. Yeah, I don't argue with the dude. He was trying to tell me Adam was what Yahushua was when he was raised in glory. And I was like, no, Adam was a normal man like you and me. That's right. You gotta, you gotta be natural first. You can't be natural before you're spiritual. Right? I mean, you can't be spiritual before you're natural. Right? You gotta be natural first. First natural, then spiritual. Right? That's why he gave us Adam. Right? That's why he gave us the law. Because the law had to teach us how do we take care of our natural body. Right? How do we take care of the natural body? You know, how do we take care of ourselves physically? And then after that, now we can learn something else, which is why I keep reading. Watch this. The first man is of the earth, earthly. The mm -hmm. second man is of the Lord, from heaven. As in the earthly, such are they also that are earthly. Mm -hmm. As in the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. Mm -hmm. And as we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Mm -hmm. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Flesh and blood can't inherit the kingdom of God. Right? So the law teaches us how to take care of our flesh and to take care of our blood, which is important. Right? Because we're here right now. But we can't look at that and be like, well, this is the end all be all. Because at the end of the day, as well as you take care of your flesh and blood, that thing ain't going to make it in. So you got to look deeper. And this is the problem that y'all sure came to solve. Right? Y'all sure came and saw that issue. We was focused on the flesh and blood. Which was okay, that's fine. But we wasn't focused on what was inside. So he had to make a way to cleanse us on the inside. We clean outside. We smell good, we looking good. Anointed with oil. Out here looking real nice. You know what I'm saying? Hair slipped back into the darn side. But, on the inside, we had our mess. Alright? Sin, custom, lying, cheating. All these different things. Right? Back to back to back to back to back to back to back. Can't get it right. Stuck into it. Wish we could stop, but can't. Grab Romans for me. Real, real quick. Grab Romans for me. Romans chapter 7. I'm going to show y'all a lot of this stuff. Worth it. Right? A lot of people watching me and still feel this way. You know what I'm saying? It's Romans chapter 7. Give me verse, uh, tell me what verse I'm on. Right? Because we look at these things and it's hard, man. It's hard. It's hard when you're a sinner. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard when you're a sinner. That's book two. Hard when you're a sinner. You know what I'm saying? You're trying to do that thing. You're trying to sin and you're trying to do right? That thing. That thing impossible there. Alright? That thing hard. Frustrating. Part of you want it. You know what I'm saying? The other part of you is just like, man, that thing... Man, I'm comfortable doing stuff like this. You know what I'm saying? You know what they say? They say it takes uh, three weeks to build, 21 days to build a habit. Something like that. You know what they say? Something like that. It'll take like 21 days to build a habit or something like that. You know what I'm saying? You you do this stuff you've been doing your whole darn life. You've been lying and cheating and cussing and playing and doing all this stuff your whole darn life. 
and now just on the dot one day, you hear the book tell you today, change? And you supposed to just change? Right? We be looking at that thing like, man, that's impossible. That thing ain't impossible. It ain't impossible. You ain't got to get out there and do it. If you mess up, fine. You fail. Right? Get up, try again, do it. Alright? That's a book for us. We can't sit here and let ourselves die out on this earth. You know what I'm saying? And the most high guys tell us, turn around, we're going to hell. That's crazy. What verse are we? It's Romans chapter 7. What verse are we? 7. No, I don't want 7. Go to God, that's too much. Uh, I want Paul talking. Yeah. Now, I know Paul talking the whole book. You know what I'm talking about. Though. Uh, Give me verse uh, 14. 20? 20 what I want? No, 14. 14? What 14 say? For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal. All right, there we go. That's, what, that's exactly what I want. Good, good, good catch. It's Romans chapter 7, verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, so uh -huh. under sin. Uh-huh. For that which I do, I allow not. Uh-huh. For what I wanted to do, for what I would, that do I not. So he's saying... That which I want to do, I can't do. Right? That which I'm not supposed to do, I end up doing even though I don't want to do it. Right? Keep going. I'm going to have to try to translate this thing for you. You know it's that King James talk. But what I hate, that I do. Right? I, I, I hate it. But I end up doing it anyway. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Right? Now he's saying right now, he's saying... If I'm doing something, but at the same time I'm looking like, man, I don't want to do that, then I'm consenting in my mind that the law is right. If I say, if I'm doing something, man, at the same time I'm doing it, I'm like, man, this is wrong. Well, guess what else say is wrong? The law. So he's saying you agreeing in your mind that the law is right when you do something that you be like, man, I shouldn't be doing this. Right? I'm doing this, but I know I shouldn't be doing this. In your mind, you agreeing that the law is right. Keep going. Now then, it is no more that it is no more I that do, but sin that dwells in me. He's saying sin is dwelling in me. It ain't you that's doing it; it's the sin doing it. And guess who in control? The sin. Right? When we let sin be in control, that's when we lost. We become captive to sin at that point. We have to let the Most High God set us free. All our choice. Right? Keep going. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh. Dwells no good thing, mm -hmm. but to will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. Right? He said, I know deep down in me, it's in me to do good. Right? But I just don't know how to perform it. I don't know how to execute that thing. I don't know how to make it happen. Right? Get in there and be quiet. Have everybody be quiet, boy. Keep going. For the good that I would, I do. For the good that I would, I do not. Uh huh. For the evil which I would not, that I do. Uh huh. Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwells in me. Uh huh. I find in a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Uh huh. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. He said, I delight in the law of God on my inside. Right? What else? But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind. Mm -hmm. bringing me into captivity of the law of sin which is in my memory. Right? And he's saying that there's a law working outside of me now, the law of sin. And it goes to war with the law that's inside of me. And guess what happens? It brings him into captivity. And that's where the mess up. We always gonna have that war. We always gonna have stuff on, on the outside warm with us on the inside. And we gonna be like, mm, I don't want to do that. Mm, that's wrong. No, I shouldn't do that. It's when it brings us into captivity. That's when we go. Because now it's taking over what was in that inside, and the inside wasn't strong enough to fight out the outside. That's unacceptable, right? That's what we can't do. That's when the most high God will be like, yeah, turn yourself around. You need to fix that. We got to clean that up, right? Keep going. Oh, wretched man that I am. He said, oh, wretched man that I am. Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Uh-huh. I thank God to Yahushua the Messiah, our Lord. Uh -huh. So when, so then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but uh -huh. with the flesh the law of sin. Uh huh. We're gonna go into eight. Yep. Cause if you stop it right there, Christians think they got something. See, even Paul can't stop sinning. Yeah. You know that you you stop it right there, they'll be like, yeah. See, I'm not sinning. It's the sin in me. I love God on the inside. It's just the sin in me that's sinning. Christians love that part. 
They think they got something. Keep reading. There is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Yahushua the Messiah, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. All right? If you don't walk after the flesh, but you walk after your spirit, there's no condemnation for you. So all that warning that he was talking about, he said, you win if you don't become captive by walking after the flesh. Right? At first he would tell you, man, I know it's wrong to do it, but I still do it. Well, if you still do it, you're walking after the flesh. He's saying there's no condemnation, therefore, if you know you're not supposed to do it and you don't allow yourself to become captive to that warn outside of you trying to warn inside. At that point, you know there's no condemnation. That's what we have to get to. Right? That's what's important for us. Grab uh, grab, uh, grab Mark for me. Oh, I said Hebrews, didn't I? Yeah. Hebrews, go, uh, go to Hebrews chapter 7 first. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 16. And then we're going to grab Mark chapter 7. Then we'll get up out of here. It's Hebrews chapter 7, verse 16. And then Mark chapter 7. Who is made not after the law of a carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless law? Mm -hmm. For he testifies, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Mm -hmm. For there is verily a disannulling of the commandment going before. What is this? Verse what? 7 verse 16. Oh, verse 16? Yeah. Give me verse 14. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. Of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning the priesthood. Hmm. Give, me priesthood. Six, give me 16 again. Who was made not after the law of a carnal commandment. Oh, there we go. I missed it. Okay. He said, who was made not after the law of a carnal commandment. You see it? You know what carnal means? Flesh. Pertaining to the flesh. Right? He said, who was made after a law and a commandment that was pertaining to the flesh. When we look at carnal, usually when, when the word Bible, when the word used uh, carnal, it's talking about the negative sense because we follow, we focus on the flesh. All right. The only reason that's negative is because the flesh is not going to get us into the kingdom. So the standards have to raise. <laughs> so the standards have to raise at that point, right? So he said, "No, that's carnal. It's a carnal law because the law had ordinances that pertain to the flesh, right? Everything we just read, what to eat, right? How to how to how to keep a woman clean." Right? How to recognize a spot on the body. All those things, all that pertain to the flesh. Right? When we look at those things, that's good and that's well for being here. But at the same time now, we have to know that we can keep our flesh as clean as we want to. We still ain't getting into the kingdom. Because flesh and blood, no matter how clean it is, it ain't getting into the kingdom. That's why Moses couldn't take them to the land. That's why Moses couldn't take them to the land. Right? And we're going to read about that. We ain't got there yet, but we're going to read about that. This is Mark chapter 7. Get up out of here. Mark chapter 7. Give me uh, give me, uh give me verse 1. Mark chapter 7. Verse 1. Then came together unto him the Pharisees and certain of the scribes which came from Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defiled, that is to say, with unwashing hands, they found fault. All right. So they said that the disciples were defiled because they didn't wash their hands. All right. These are the Pharisees. So we're looking at it. We just read our law or some of our law and we see how clean God is. You think God got a problem with a person washing their hands? Right? So you would think, well, they didn't wash their hands. God, you know, God is a clean person. They probably should clean them. Let's keep reading. For the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they wash their hands, often eat not, holding the tradition of the elders. Right? Our people were clean. But notice it said, holding the what? Tradition of the elders. That was traditions of the elders. That wasn't the law. Right? If they would have said, making sure we keep in the law, we wash ourselves often. That would be different. But instead, they said holding the traditions of the elders. That's not law. So watch what happens. And when they came from the market, except they washed, they eat not, and many other things there be which they have received to hold. 
as the washing of cups and pots, brazen vessels on a table. Uh huh. Then the Pharisees and scribes asked him, Why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders? All right. So they came. They called the men defiled. He's like they defiled. And then he asked y'all, sure. Why your disciples don't walk after the tradition of the elders? Why don't they do what the elders told them to do? All right. Keep going. He answered and said unto them, Well has I, well has Isaiah prophesied of you, hypocrites, as it is written, This people honored me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Uh huh. Howbeit in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. All right? So he said, These people run their mouth and act like they love me and they praising me, but in the, in the truth, on the inside, they far from me. All right? He said, In vain they worship me. All right? They said they teach for doctrine the commandments of men. They act like it's my teaching, and they teach them what men teach. That ain't my book. Right? So that's what these people coming through when they say, oh, you can't eat me. This is the gap theory. All these different things, when they trying to act like this is God's word, they're commandments of men. Right? When we look at it, we want to read the book. We're going to call scriptures and scriptures and most scriptures until we can get an understanding from the book. Right? From the book. If it ain't book, I don't want to hear it. Right? Keep going. For laying aside the commandment of God, you hold the tradition of men, mm -hmm. as the washing of pots and cups, mm -hmm. and many other such like things you do. Mm -hmm. And he said unto, said unto them, Full well you reject the commandment of God, that you may keep your own tradition. Right? He said, you reject the commandment of God, and you mess around and keep your own tradition. What do you think these people are doing when they tell you at Sunday school and they read to you the Ten Commandments and they get they get to Sabbath and they don't even bat an eye? They said, the Most High God said, keep the Sabbath holy. They in Sunday school. And they say, the Most High God said, keep the Sabbath holy. And they teach you every every Sunday school all the Ten Commandments. And you roll past that thing. They don't even, they don't even flinch when that thing comes. You still going to go on Sunday, huh? Sunday's still your day. That's the day that everybody gets to go. So guess what you can't do on Sunday? Can't cuss. This is Sunday. Don't be talking like that. It's Sunday. It's the Lord's day. Meanwhile, I say everyone keep the Sabbath. So what are we doing at that point? Tradition, God's word. Nah, we can get rid of that. We got tradition. What do you think they're doing? Are they talking about Christmas? Okay. Christmas is coming. That's the reason for the season. So much grace in the air. That was, a, that was my mom. He said, so much grace in there around this time period. Grace in there? Because of Christmas? I thought it was the, the doors open. I thought somebody farted. You know, they had grace in there. What you talking about? Grace in there? Now, that's crazy. That don't make no sense, right? We look at it, but guess what we don't know about? We don't know about Passover. We don't know about, we don't know about Feast of Weeks. We don't know about the end gathering. We don't know about Day of Atonement. We don't know about um, uh, uh, Day of Trumpets, right? We don't know about none of the days that the Most High God gave us this holiday, but we sure know about Easter and Christmas. Because traditions, and you got God's Word, mm, yeah, we can get that out of here. We can take the Christmas. Right? That's the problem. If you want to, honestly, honestly, if somebody wanted to create their own holiday, they uphold all the day, all the days of the Most High God, but they say, you know what? For my family, for my people, for my kingdom, for my whatever, this is the day that we celebrate. Ain't nothing wrong with that. It's when you get to talking about, oh, God gave us this day when it's a lie, that's when you made a problem. Right? When you get talking about Christmas is Jesus' birthday, that's when it's a problem. That's a lie. You talk about Easter, see, Easter is about when Jesus rose from the dead. That's a lie. You need to cut that out. We ain't got time for that. All these days ain't got nothing to do with what y'all talking about. They got to do with other stuff. Therefore, the tradition outweighs God's word. And that's y'all's sure problem with people. Right? Keep going. For Moses said, Honor thy father and thy mother. Uh huh. And then he said to them, Full well you reject the commandment of God that you may keep your own tradition. Mm -hmm. For Moses said, Honor thy father and thy mother, and whoso curses father and mother, let him die the death. Mm -hmm. But you say, If a man shall say to his father and mother, It is Corbin, that is to say, a gift, by whatsoever thou might be profited by me, he shall be free. Alright, so he explained to him, This is how y'all breaking the law. And this is how y'all prefer a tradition over breaking the law. According to Moses' law, according to the law of Moses, 
He said, if you don't honor your mother and father, or if you curse your mother and father, you should be put to death. However, when y'all say it is Corbin, in other words, this is dedicated to God, they using that as to not give something to their mom and dad. So, so say, say your mom asks you, let me have uh, let me have twenty dollars. You know, let me just have twenty dollars. What you say to your mom is, oh, ah, this twenty dollars, my last twenty, that's dedicated to God. Right? That's what that is. That's what it is Corbin me. Oh, this is all oh, this dedicated to God. I can't even give it to you. You had no intention of dedicating it to God until after your mom asked for it. So you would rather dedicate it to God so that you won't have to give it to him. And in their tradition, they said, yeah, we can do that. That was our tradition. Our people's tradition was, yeah, that's, that's a fine thing to do. Right? If you dedicate something to God, you ain't got to give it to your mother and father. You can't read that in our law anyway. But our tradition wrote that out like, mm, yeah, if you dedicate something to God, you ain't got to give it to your mother and father. Right? Let's get another one, y'all, sure. And he suffered him no more to do aught for his father or mother. Uh-huh. Making the word of God of none effect through your tradition which you have delivered. And many such like things do ye. Mm -hmm. And when he had called all the people unto him, he said unto them, Hearken unto me, every one of you. He said, understand. Everybody pay attention to me and understand. Watch this. There is nothing from without a man that enters into him that can defile him. But the things which come out of him, those are they that defile the man. He said, there is nothing outside of you that enters in you that defiles you. Only what comes out of you defiles you. So, let's say you eat a big swine flesh, chicken, swine, beef, lobster sandwich. I mean, all the clean and unclean mixed in that thing. And then on top of you put a little ketchup, you know what I'm saying? And then you just bite into that thing. He said, no matter what you eat, that thing ain't going to defile you. Right? Watch what? If any man has the ears to hear, let him hear. Uh-huh. And when he was entered into the house from the people, his disciples asked him concerning the parable. He was looking like, the disciples were like, what, 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 you, what you talking about up there? Because that's new to us. All we got in law tell us nothing. This is an abomination to you. You shall not eat this. This is unclean to you. Right? We got a whole lot of law telling us very clearly that's unclean. In other words, that's the fire. Now we got Yahushua popping up. We trust the man now. Yahushua like, listen, ain't nothing that you eat going to defile you. For us, it sounds like a contradiction. We look like, man, you just contradicted that word. Watch this. And he said unto them, are ye so without understanding also? Do you not perceive that whatsoever thing... Whatsoever thing formed without enters into the man, it cannot defile him, because it enters not into his heart, but into the belly, and goes out into the drought, purging all meats. And he said that... In other words, you're going to poop. Either whatever you eat, you're going to digest it, and you're going to poop. That's what he mean when he says it's going to purge the meats. He's like, whatever you eat, it's going to go into the drought, and you're going to poop that thing out. Right? So at the end of the day, in terms of your flesh... You're going to be all right. Right? I mean, I'm sorry. In terms of your spirit, you're going to be all right. Because he said, none of it goes into your heart. But he says next. Watch this. And he said, that which comes out of the man, that defiles the man. Mm -hmm. From within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. Evil thoughts. Adulteries. Adulteries. Fornication. Fornication. Murders. Murder. Thefts. Thefts. Covetousness. Covetousness. Wickedness. Wickedness. Deceit. Deceit. Lasciviousness. Lasciviousness. An evil eye. An evil eye. Blasphemy. Blasphemy. Pride. Pride. Foolishness. Foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. That's what defiles you. Right? Because now what is Yahushua? Is Yahushua talking about flesh at this point? He trying to tell you how to get into the kingdom. Right? We talked about flesh. We got a whole law to tell you how to keep yourself clean. You'll be taken care of. Your flesh will be good. You'll look nice. Hair will be flipped to the side. We look in our eye. Right? But, at the same time now, how are you looking on the inside? That's what he got mad about the Pharisees. Real quick, before we get out of here, grab, uh, grab uh, Matthew chapter 23, give me verse 20, uh, Matthew chapter 23, give me verse 25. Yeah. Matthew chapter 23, verse 25, watch what he said. Real quick. In Matthew chapter 23, Verse 25. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Uh-huh. 
But you make clean the outside of the cup. You clean the outside? Outside represents what for us? Flesh. The flesh. The flesh is clean. Nothing wrong with that. But what else? And of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. He said, but on the inside, you got a whole lot of problems going on. Right? The flesh can't make it in. So even though the flesh is clean, it can't make it into the kingdom. Only the inside can. Only the spirit is going to make it. Only the soul is going to make it. So if we don't clean up the soul, then he's trying to let you know the flesh is going to die off anyway. So y'all, she was letting you know, if you let your flesh go, our law was designed to, to, to for our flesh. The parts of our law was designed for our flesh to keep us good, keep us healthy, right? But if even if we were unhealthy and we were, our skin looked bad, right? And we were diseased and all that. If we obey God from our heart, we would still make it into the kingdom because our flesh is going to die off anyway. Right? That's the goal of what Yahushua is trying to tell us. A lot of people think that he did away with the law. He wasn't doing away with the law. He's letting you know this is what's important, the inside. If you do, if you do these things to cover the inside, which is also in the law, don't, don't make a mistake. That's why Paul can come back and say the law is spiritual. Right? And that's not a contradiction when he say the law is spiritual and, and uh, the writer of Hebrews say the law uh, the law of carnal commands. Right? Because there are carnal commandments in the law. Right? Some of the law pertains to flesh. That's true. The law itself is spiritual. So everything Yahushua told you was in the law. Just about everything Yahushua told you was in the law. But there's extra parts in the law that pertain to the flesh. If we didn't do those, Right? If we did do those, either way, the flesh not going to get in. He is trying to let you know it's what's inside of a man is what's going to defile you. Right? Don't let the stuff inside of you defile you. That lets you know your heart is pure. That lets you know that you got a heart that the Most High God can take on. That lets you know you're clean. Right? If you just clean the outside, the inside make a make a darn mess, you know, you just like our fathers, the Pharisees, who made a darn mess, put the man to darn death. Right? And they're going to suffer because of it. Right? It's our job at this point to make sure we learn enough. Because the only way we get it, we ain't going to get it just by, you know, washing our hands a whole lot. Ain't nothing wrong with washing your hands. We're clean people. That's what we built for. All right? Ain't nothing wrong with washing your hands. But you ain't going to get it by washing your hands a lot, by eating all the right things. Right? Trying to be a vegan. Trying to go on diets and all these different things. All that stuff good. That stuff great. But at the same time, guess what we got to keep? Outside clean. Good. Right? The inside got to be clean, too. We got to make sure we get it right. Right? Otherwise, we get to a point where we get there, feel good about ourselves. Most of God be like, yeah, turn your, turn your foot around. We ain't, you know what I'm saying? We ain't even good. Right? It's a blessing for the Most High God to get us this opportunity. For us to still be alive, still have breath in our lungs. It took us out of, it could have took us up out of here. It's a whole lot of situations we didn't been in. Some of us, right? It's a whole lot of situations we didn't been in. Like, that could have been it. There's a whole lot of people out here, they walking around, it ain't it. They still got plenty of life left in them. But they don't have a mind for God at all. It's not even an inkling in them that's even interested in them. You know how dangerous that is? It's nothing in you that even care about it. This thing going live on Facebook right now. There's people just swinging past that thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know how, you know how dangerous that is? Like, you don't even care? That thing don't even affect you one bit? Somebody come up to you and be like, you going to hell. That thing don't even touch you. You ain't even hit you. You know, okay. Look at this crazy be religious person. Look at this cool. Just keep moving. Getting drunk. Getting high. Popping darn pills. Alright? We got to thank the most high guy. At least we got the darn mind. He can do something with a mind. You got a mind to do it, he can do something with that. Next thing, we just got to keep taking them steps. And after a while, you just got to jump and just make it happen. You know what I mean? We ain't got time to keep playing around. Get late in the day. Alright? Any questions? We'll go ahead and pray out.